Hey there, Tanya from moneygal.ca. Welcome to the fourth video in my series on budgeting using Excel. So in the last video, I showed you how to build this cash flow management, uh, well, how to use this cash flow management table. And in this video, I'll just quickly show you how to build it. So we're going to choose an empty tab. We have our budget on this first tab here. This is the budget that uh, we balanced and built together in the first two videos. So you choose a new tab and I'm going to do as least amount of typing as possible because I want the two tables to be as related as possible. So when I make changes on my budget, the changes will automatically be made over on my cash flow management table. I don't have to worry about uh, doing math or figuring out how, you know, what effect I've had on myself if I have to change something in my budget. So I've labeled a couple of columns here, annual balance, spent to date, and per pay. First thing I'm going to do is bring over the names of my categories. So in cell A3, the, cat, the um, formula is going to be equals. Then I go back over onto my budget, click on the name of the first category, in this case, mortgage rent, and push enter. And then I'm going to go ahead and click and drag that formula down so that all of the categories show up. I know that this number is also on my budget, so I'm going to do the same thing. Equals, back to my budget get that per pay amount for mortgage and rent and push enter and then drag that formula down as well. Then I'm going to put all my pay periods ending. So each pay period gets two columns, one where I see the amount that's left to spend in that pay period and one where I enter the money I have spent in that pay period. So um, when I'm labeling them, I only have to do this once and then I can just copy paste. So the formula here is going to be equals reference the first date over here plus 14 days. Enter. And then if I just copy, so control C is copy these two cells, click over here and do control V for paste. And if I just keep doing that across all the way till the end of the year, I'll get all of the paydays um, for the rest of the year. If you get paid, I get paid every two weeks. So plus 14 is the formula I would put for the dates here, but if you get paid uh, every 15 days or that sort of thing, then you'll have to adjust your formula there. All right, um, this amount here, for the very first week of the year, the formula is going to be equals the amount that I have allotted for each week minus the amount that I'm spending in that pay period. Enter. Then I can just drag that formula down. For every other week, it's going to be slightly different. It's going to be equals the amount left over from last week plus the amount that I get fresh each pay period minus the amount that I'm going to spend in this pay period. And the important thing that you need to do for this to work is um, you have to go back into, into your formula and right in front of the D, you have to put a dollar sign. And that's so that when you copy paste this formula, you're always referencing this cell here, which is the amount that you get each pay period uh, in your category. If you don't put that dollar sign, then when you copy paste the formula, Excel is going to give you the relative cell to the formula you put in. So in this case, it would always be the third one back from where you're typing. And that's not what you want. You want this actual D cell to be the one in your formula. So enter, and then you can drag that down. And then you can select all of these and do control C for copy again, and then put yourself under the word ending and do control V for paste. And you can just do that all the way across, all the way to the end of the year. And you can see that each week, the amount that's available is more and more because obviously you haven't entered that you're spending any money yet, but as you spend money, the amounts will adjust accordingly. The amount spent to date is simply equals, and then you're gonna go across all the way across the year and highlight each week what you're going to spend. So the amount you spend in that pay period plus the amount in this one, plus the amount in this one, plus the amount in this one, etc. All the way across to December 31st, enter. Once you've done it once though, you don't ever have to type it again. You can just drag it down and now you have that done. All right. This formula here, the annual balance, is going to be the amount that you first had on your budget. So equals back to your budget, the per year amount for that first category, and then minus what you're going to spend. I'm going to push my right arrow one time because um, 
the way the, the formula was showing up, I wouldn't have been able to click on the cell I wanted, but I know the cell I want is the one next door, one to the right. So I just clicked on my right arrow and Excel went and got, you can see up here that it got the C3 cell for me, enter. And then if you drag that formula down, now automatically each category will show you the amount you have left for the year. And in this cell here, the formula is going to be equals the total that has come in for the year minus open a bracket, type in the word sum, start a new bracket, and go ahead and drag to select all of these spent to date amounts, and then close both your brackets. Close one bracket, close the second bracket, and push enter. Now, as you use this table, the amount will automatically be updated. I like this cell to be highlighted so that it jumps out at me. Um, you can watch the video before this to find out what goes in all these cells. And the last thing I'm going to do is make it so that um, when anything goes in the negative, it turns red. So I'm going to select all the cells all the way across to the end of the year, click on conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, less than. I'm going to tell it less than zero. So I typed a zero in this box here. And I'm going to leave the default, which is light red fill and dark red text. I like that one and say OK. And I'm going to do the same for this one especially because I definitely want to see if I go into my overdraft. So less than zero. OK. I'm going to freeze my cells so that as I scroll over uh, my headings and columns that I want to see all the time stay where they are. So I'm going to highlight this cell here under the first word ending. Go to the View tab, Freeze Panes, Freeze Panes, now as I scroll, and as I scroll over, my headings and columns stay where they are. I don't need to see these two columns. They can just happen in the background. So I'm going to select them, right click, and hide them. And the last thing, I'm just going to select and color every second week just to make it easier for me to see. And this one, unfortunately, there's no quick way to do it. You just have to basically go across and do it and do it and do it. And then that way each week is distinctly uh, that you can see it from the others. That is that. If you have any questions, please visit me at my website, moneygal.ca. Thanks for watching.